managing DKA is not about glucose levels. You can give insulin and glucose levels are fine. That is going to possibly kill the patient as well because other systems will have a problem. So managing DKA, your doctors, right? Final year, final year, final year, doctor, you guys are second year, right? Management of DKA, basic principle, keep kidney alive and working on, on your side. Kidney is going to fix the, the metabolic problems. That is one. Second, while you are keeping kidney working with you, while you have the renal system working with you, you keep an eye on what? Kidney says, hey man, you go and to take a look at the heart. We don't exacerbate hypokalemia causing arrhythmias. You take care of that. I will fix the acid-base balances. So your duty is to make sure that potassium levels are correct. And then the third duty is to make sure osmolality is correct. So that cerebral edema does not occur. That's it. Body will shift from catabolic state to anabolic state as these things start correcting. Of course, I'm simplifying it, but this is the basic principle. If you keep this much in your mind that I have to keep the kidney with me and I have to take care of heart and, and brain, you're good. So here, improved renal function. Can I possibly say this is the most important outcome you want? Did you think about it this way before? Bring the glucose down, take care of the potassium, give bicarbonate, this level. Keep the kidney functioning. Kidney would take care of stuff. Right? Now, what else would perfusion do? As we just talked, it would cause improved insulin responsiveness. How? By two ways. One, the stress reduction will remove effect of epinephrine. So tissues will become better responsive to insulin, number one. Number two, better perfusion will take insulin to more places. We have to open up the body to start receiving this and start washing out the, the toxic substances. What else would happen? with the improved perfusion. How about lactic acidosis? Reduction in lactic acidosis. Why? As the flow increases, nutrients would start going in, the waste products would start coming out, and aerobic will start moving towards aerobic, and lactic acid would reduce. This is happening with perfusion. We haven't done anything to the metabolic side yet. So what is the takeaway in your mind? You are in a hospital, you have received a patient with DKA, your reflex should be, I need to put volume in this guy, in this patient, so that this all can happen. Make sense? Anything else that volume would do? Of course, we talked about stabilizing the cardiovascular system itself. That is also very important. You don't want heart to be in a state where it is continuously beating fast. Why? So you, one, you have hypoxia and second, heart is beating fast. What is the danger? What is the danger? Arrhythmias is one that is hypokalemia, but mostly heart's, heart's demand for nutrition is going to go up. So you can end up causing angina and infarctions. So heart can become damaged because of extra tax on it when it is working fast with less nutrition and oxygen available. Will it happen to everyone? No. But can it happen? Yes. So you have to stabilize the heart. So what did you get with the volume corrections? Cardiovascular system stabilizations, perfusion stabilization, kidney stabilization, and insulin responsiveness, stress reduction. Good. Now rule. ADA's rule, ADA is American Diabetes Association. How do they recommend that you give fluid? They recommend that if the patient has severe hypovolemia, you hang up normal saline one liter first hour. Stat. If patient has severe hypovolemia, you hang up 
वन लीटर ऑफ सुसवियर हाइपोवोलीमिया वन लीटर नॉर्मल से लाइन नाइन फाइव सोडियम क्लोराइड स्टैट फर्स्ट आवर so while you're doing this then you can see how the patient is coming along and then figure it out after the next hour how to handle it but that is one if the patient is not hypovolemic in severe hypovolemic state if the hypovolemia is mild or moderate then what do you do so you can actually hang this thing up then you can see the labs and see what is the hypovolemia and osmolality is primarily you would check so how do you see the osmolality in dka so there is a formula yes you take sodium multiply it with 2, it with two plus glucose, sorry, glucose milligram per deciliter divided by 18, 18 absolutely so you take 2 multiplied by sodium plus glucose in millig milligram per deciliter that is important because dividing by 18 is actually to convert it into milliosmoles per liter. So if it is already in milliosmoles, then you don't need to do this this 18 plus blood urea nitrogen divided by 2.8. Now we have said this in the past as well that for all practical reasons, just having sodium is good enough to give you osmolality, but in the DKA and in the HHS, hyperosmotic hyperglycemic. Uh, syndrome in both of those cases glucose levels can be so much high that even after dividing by 18 their level can become significant for osmolarity i'll give you an example let's say the sodium is 140 milli equivalents per liter and glucose is 600 milligram per deciliter and forget about the bun so now 140 multiplied by 2 is 280 that seems to be normal However, when you take six, 600 and divide by 20, for example, that gives you what? 30. 30. Add 30 to 280. Have you gone above 300? Have you gone to 320 or so? You have hyperosmolarity. Now, if this glucose was, was normal glucose, let's say it was 100. Sorry about that. Let's say if it was 100, then do you care? 100 divided by 20 is 5. 280 plus 5 is nothing. So one more thing that I want you to be sensitive about in the hospital is glucose level for a DK patient and HHS patient becomes significant. So then you cannot ignore it. Normally you can. Right. So I, I usually would never ignore it. Just look at it as a habit so that you never make a mistake. Good. This osmolality check is very important because that would then tell you if the patient is in hypernatremia state or normal or hyponatremic state. And we talked about it that whenever sodium and water go out in equal proportion that is called hypovolemia. Whenever more water goes out and less sodium that is called hypernatremia. And whenever more sodium goes out in less water that is called hyponatremia. Once you understand the sodium state then what do you do if the patient is so i'm going to take this out if the patient is hyper or normal tensive that is hypernatremic or normotensive in this case you can give you can give hypernatremia would you give normal saline no give half saline half normal so that would be half normal saline and possibly from 250 milliliter per hour to 500 milliliter per hour oh sorry milliliter per kg per hour essentially half a liter quarter liter to half a liter per hour you follow up with that now please remember do not correct volume very fast so how do you know you're not correcting volume very fast we talked about cerebral edema before 